Hello and welcome everyone. This is the Noonday Renewal at St. Matthew's Church, Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. Today, we are going to be doing a Teze prayer service. And this is all about creation, where all life begins. I thought it might be nice since a lot of us can't be in the, in the church together, I might start doing noon renewals about our stained glass windows. So today is all about the first stained glass window. And you can see there at the bottom the title, The Almighty Moves in Love to Create the Universe. So now as we join in this time of Teze prayer, which revolves around music, silence, and scripture, let us remember this God that loves us so much that he created us, that he came, brought this whole world into being so that we might know his love, so we might see his glory and live it out too, even though at times we might wreck it. Let's pray about that. So now let's take some time just to center on God, feel his presence in his life, on our lives. We'll start our first hymn to this song called Come and Fill Our Hearts. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Second hymn is, Bless the Lord, my soul. I know these songs can be a little repetitive, but the idea behind Teze worship is to let these words really sink in. These words have so much life to them because there's so much of God in them. 
So let's sing them together and dwell on that. Sorry for the light. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul. And bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. One of my favorite images is of God being like an artist as he created the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. And let dry ground appear. And it was so. God, God called the dry ground land. And the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit and seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in accordance to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. It was so. God made two great lights, the great light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, to separate light from darkness. 
And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. The third and final hymn is Ubi Caritas, which means live in charity and steadfast love. Ubi Caritas et amor, Ubi Caritas Deus Ibiens. Ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas deus ibi es. Ubi caritas et amor, ubi Caritas Deus Ibi Es Ubi Caritas Et Amor Ubi Caritas Deus Ibi Es The incarnation of the word of life. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim it to be the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Let us pray. O 
Holy One, whose fingers sculpted sun and moon. Holy Spirit, who brooded over the waters of creation and brought order from chaos. Holy Word, who is the instrument of life, the incarnate Word, the light of the world. May we share in your grace in the love and communion that you share, so that we may live in your likeness. For you live in unity and yet difference. One God, holy one and yet three, now and forever. Amen. At these times of open prayers, I'm going to short, say a short prayer in relation to each of these six themes. And I invite you to speak aloud or silently prayers on your own hearts in relation to these six themes. Lord God, we turn to you now and we thank you that you have made the church, that you have made a people of love and fellowship. We pray, Lord, that we might be the image of your son, that we might be that peaceful garden that people find rest in, that people find a home in. May they see in us something different than what they see in the world. May we repent of our weakness, of our folly, of our evil, of our sin, the ways we have not fallen you, follow you so that we might be more like you. Share that love. We pray especially for St. Matthew's, but we pray for all churches that we might find a greater unity, even in our difference. And in that united difference, we might be a beacon of hope. We pray for St. Matthew's for the plans of reopening, for our minister, ministry, our pastoral ministry, to our ministry to children and to youth, for all the ways we are connecting with people online, for all those that we cannot be beside, yet we still are connected with thanks to your Holy Spirit. Now I invite you to pray for your church or whatever is in need. Pray for all the ways that St. Matthews is trying to reach out to those around them, the community. For the courage to share the gospel with those that are obviously needed and those that hide their hurt, their longings. We pray for all those in authority, whether municipal, provincial, national, or international. We pray, Lord, that they might make decisions thoughtfully, that they might discern with you what is truly right and good and not just follow their own women or not just line pockets or care for their own interests, but that together we might build a more peaceable world, a world that at least points towards your kingdom and that garden, peace where you remind us that it was good. Help us to do our best to make that good again. And where we cannot, Lord, 
as you know and we know that we cannot fix all things, do all things. Help us to point towards the world that is to come, your justice that we can trust, that in the time to come you will judge right, that what we do in this mat world does matter, so all will be set right. We pray for all those that are making decisions for September, for our teachers, principals, school boards. Pray for everything going on in the Peel School Board. We pray for all those that are in authority in ways that we might not always recognize parents, anyone that serves. Volunteers, food banks, shelters. Lord God, we pray for the world and all the turmoil that is in it. We pray, Lord, over the ongoing refugee crisis. We pray over COVID and how this is affecting so many nations and that in a lot of ways we in Canada are only experiencing a little love, the hurt that comes from it because we have an infrastructure and can live and support ourselves. Mm. We pray, Lord, for the countries and nations that are having a time, tough time at this time. We pray over, Lord, all of those countries that continually experience outbreaks, whether it's Ebola or whatever else it might be, or AIDS. Or... We pray, Lord, over all those doctors and people working in those areas. We pray, Lord, that they might lift up local leaders and that... There might be life and hope in those places. Lord God, we pray that we might find ways to partner together. We pray over all the tyranny in this world, all the evil that comes from bad leadership, all the death, the worry, the fear, Pray over all of that, Lord, and I, I resist those spirits and I cast them out, Lord. May your life, your peace settle on all of these people that need you so much, Lord, as we need you. Settle in our hearts and bring that peace. We pray over the climate crisis that we might care for this creation which you have given us. You have given us and it was so good and we have wrecked. Help us to see our own fault. Help us to be willing to give up on some of those things that we think are our right, but really hurt ourselves, others, and this world. Lord God, we pray for the community around us, wherever we live. We pray, Lord, for the peace and community there. You have created us to be a people that need one another. We're experiencing that so much right now in COVID that we need one another. We miss this community. We miss being close, we miss touch, we miss conversation, we miss just seeing each other. We 
We pray, Lord, that this longing that so many are experiencing right now may take fruit in the time to come, that godly communities might be created and flourish. We pray, Lord, that each of us might have courage to share you, share you with our lives physically, but also with our voices, that we might be that same sacrificial love that you have shown us. We pray for the community around St. Matthew's, for all the poverty that exists around us, and we pray that you might guide us, Lord, how we might serve and care, how we might give the bounty you have given us, so that just like you promised Abraham, we might be a blessing to all people. We pray, Lord, for the sick in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for all those that are suffering from depression or anxiety at this time. Pray, Lord, that they might know that they are supported and loved. That they might know that you are with them at all times that they might hold on to that, that you might help them through. You know, Lord, how much hurt there is. I pray for all the families that support, all those that are sick. We pray, Lord, for all those that are sick from COVID, that are hurting as they age. Pray for all those that are surviving through cancer. We pray for so many other ways that people are hurting. We pray for all those that are hurting in their spirit, that know that they need something more and yet they don't know how to fill it. Pray for all those that are spiritually searching. We pray for all those that are wrestling with guilt don't believe they can be forgiven. We pray for all the proud that are trapped in the imagination of their hearts. We pray for all those that in riches have just found emptiness. We pray for all those that feel alone, do not yet know your presence. I invite you to say names of those you love, those that know you know we need our prayers. Lastly, Lord, we lift up to you all those who have died, all those that we've had to say goodbye to, and that now leave a gap. We mourn that separation, that loss, that distance. But we turn to you, Lord, trusting 
that you are a loving, merciful, and welcoming God. We trust that you are a God that has welcomed them into your heart, into your bosom. And so now, Lord, just as we mourn, we also celebrate. Because those we love are in a paradise, in great communion with you, where they might know love incarnate, where they might know the fullness of love and bounty and life and joy, where they might experience you in the fullness, and where they are just waiting for us. that we might join in that great and good garden that you have made, that kingdom that is yet to come. And yet we have already begun to experience in this life. So Lord, we, at the same time that we mourn, we also rejoice. For just as you said, those that mourn will be comforted. And we trust you, Lord. Just as you defeated death on the cross, you have defeated death for all of us. You were but the first fruit of this new life. Now that new life is waiting for all of us. We experience but the first moment in our baptism that life is yet to come and there will be such a joy in about it. Lord God, we pray all of these things because these are prayers of worship of you. You are a loving and giving and generous God and we join you in that. We want to have eyes to see it and we rejoice in what we see and we hold on to what we have yet to see. May hope always triumph. Amen. And now let us join in the prayer that our brother Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I hope that this has been meaningful to you. That just as God has created all things, he has given you new life in this moment. If you have found this meaningful, I invite you to look back at past recordings of Noon Renewals or look forward to our Noon Renewals, which happen every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Or you're welcome to join us on Sunday as well. All of our services are posted on Zoom, on YouTube. But if you'd like to be part of our Zoom worship, where we also have coffee hour together, uh, please contact the office and we will get you in touch there. And if you'd like to contact myself or anyone at the church, we'd love to speak to you. Um, God bless. Until then. <laughs>